Welcome back to the seventh video on adding raster data. Before I show you how to add the raster data into your company GIS project, we are going to remove this layer that is Nigerian shape file layer, and then we are going to convert the student CSV layer we added in the previous video into a shape file. This is because we needed to convert it to shapefile so that we'll be able to perform spatial analysis with it. Remember, we only added it as a CSV file layer. So we have to convert it to shapefile in order to be able to perform geographical analysis with it. Now, let's start by removing the Nigerian admin shapefile layer. Apart from the fact that you can uncheck and check to hide and display the layer respectively. You can also remove it from the layer panel simply by, by simply right clicking and then selecting remove. Note that removing is not deleting. If you remove it from the layer panel, it will still be available in your GIS project folder. The shaper will still be available here, even though you remove it. So removing is not the same thing as deleting. So let's remove the layer. Right click on it and then select remove. So we are removing it just because we don't need it at this moment. So let's focus on the layer we are, we are more interested in. In, the, in. in future we can add it if we need to use it. So now remember that this layer is a CSV layer. So we have to convert it to a shape file layer to be able to perform some kind of geographical analysis using it. So in order to convert this CSV layer to shape layer, you right click on the layer and then select save us. So from the save us dialog box under the format option, make sure that ESRI shape file is selected. All these other ones are other file formats that you can convert to. But we are more interested in shapefile. So select ESRI shapefile. Then save us. This is where you are going to save the converted shapefile. So click on the browse button to select the folder where you are going to save it. So this time around, I'm going to save it on my hard drive inside my GIS folder and then inside the vectors folder. So we need to save it inside the vectors folder since we are creating a shape file. I remember a shape file is a vector file format. So inside the vectors folder, we are going to right click and then select new folder. So we are going to create a new folder called Nasarawa shape files. So from now, all our shape files will be saved in this folder. So open the folder, then type the name of the shape file we are creating. So in this case, I'm going to use students as the name of my file. You can actually use anything you want to use. So after typing the name of the folder, you click on save. So when you click on save, note that the save as box is populated with the parts where you are going to save the folder. So it means you are good to go. Then the encoding type, I would advise you to use the, to use the default option. So you don't need to change it. Then the layer coordinate reference system. You can actually use select from any of these. Or if you are using a different coordinate reference system, then you need to change it from here by clicking on Browse, then select the appropriate corner reference system and apply it. So I want to cancel it. We don't need it. This option is okay for us. So then if you wish to type the data source, that's a, a kind of description to describe your data source. You can type it here. And if you want to describe the layer or write a note on the layer, you can type it here. But in this case, I'm going to leave it blank. 
So if you want to skip attributes data data creation, you just check this box. But I don't want to skip it, so I will allow it. I will leave it blank. So if you want to add save file to map, that is you want to add the save file directly to your layer panel immediately after it, after creation. So you check it. So I want to add it to my layer panel immediately after it's created. So I'll check it. So now I'm going to click on OK to convert this CSV layer into a shape file layer. Click on OK. So export to vector file has been completed. So I click on OK. And as you can see, we now have two student layer. One is a shape file layer, and then the old one is the CSV layer. And both of them are actually representing the same point, as you can see from the map view area. So the new one is overlapping the old one. How do you know which one is the shape file layer and which one is the CSV layer? Let me quickly show you how to identify a shape file layer and the CSV layer. So this is the new layer, which is actually the shape file layer. Select it, then go to the layer menu. And then you see that this tab, bubble editing, is active. So this tab is active. So it means it's a shape file layer. It could be edited. And the geographical analysis could be performed on it. So if you go back to the CSV layer, which is the old layer, select it and go to the layer menu. You see that the toggle edit tab will not be active. This is because it can be edited and no geographical analysis can be performed on it. So basically, this is how to know if a layer is a shape file layer or not. So now let's remove the CSV layer. We don't need it any longer. So I click on it and select remove. So this is how to convert a CSV layer into a shape file layer. Now, let me show you how to add a raster data. In order for you to add a raster data, you will simply go to the layer menu and then select add raster. So from the add raster dialog box, you have to navigate to your folder where you saved your raster. In this case, I saved mine in the raster folder inside the GIS process folder. So open it and then we'll have the raster data for our video tutorial. So select it and click on open. So the raster has been added as seen on the layer panel. But it's not showing. It's not showing on the module area. So for us to see it, we simply right click on it and then zoom to layer estate. So here we go. This is the raster that has been added. But this raster is actually supposed to be in the same region as the students location but if you zoom to layer extent on the student's location you see that it's on a different coordinate environment just the way you can see from the coordinate status bar below if you zoom back to the raster you see that it's in a, it's in a different coordinate environment from that of the students and actually they are supposed to be in the same place so let me zoom closely on the raster you can use this, this zoom button to zoom to the selected box in the raster. So this uh, the raster is not in the same environment with this college of the student's location, which is wrong. So the simple reason is because this raster is not geographics. That's why it's not in the same environment with this shape file representing the location of source of students within the settlement. So in order for us to make the points overlap on the raster map, then we need to georeference this raster map. But I will not be covering this in this video because of time. We are going to georeference this particular raster in the next video. But before then, let me quickly show you the content of the shape file we created from the students CSV data.
So we we'll save the shape files in the Nasarawa shape files folder. When you open it, you see that we have all the we have the shape file together with the accompanying D, B, F, and S, H, X files, as well as projection files and other complementary files to the shape file. So I'm going to stop here for for this video and then in the next video we are going to see how to reference this raster image so that it will lie in the same college environment at the student's location so thank you for watching i wish you all the best